Hello, Free Leaguers. Welcome to the Free League update for November 2021. This is our monthly show where we keep you up to date on all things Free League publishing, whether it's uh, announcements, new releases, um, pre-orders, uh, Kickstarter uh, updates, just all the stuff that we have going on here at Free League Publishing. Uh, if you enjoy these uh, these sessions, please hit that like button down below. That lets us know that uh, you have find value in these sessions and also it helps with the youtube analytics as well and i'll remind folks that if you would like to stay up to date on all the things that we do here uh, on this youtube platform hit that subscribe button uh, we'd love to have you as part of our youtube community and we create all sorts of uh new content for uh, for this channel so uh yeah we'd love to have you of course uh you know we have to do the show with the one and only my, the man that, that that you all come to talk to to, uh, to listen to, uh, not it's not me. I, I I know this. It is the one and only Thomas Harenstam from the CEO of Freely Publishing. Thomas, thank you for coming on and giving your time to to update us all on all things Free League to today. Sure, thank you. Good to be back. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's been a busy month for for Free League Publishing. We've uh, we've had some announcements. We've uh, we did the uh, Twilight Two Thousand uh, launch uh, at retail. Uh, let's yeah. Why don't, why don't we actually just talk a little bit about uh, the the Twilight Two Thousand because that was kind of I think the biggest thing that we did this uh, this this uh, month, and that is uh, Twilight Two Thousand hit uh, retail. It's still. Do you want to give some updates as far as the shipping situation? For I know you sent out a, a, a a Kickstarter update to backers uh, the other day. Uh, do you want to just give folks a rundown as to what uh, what the situation is with with the Twilight Two Thousand? Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, basically, I mean, almost all uh, shipments are are out. Uh, maybe, but we do have a few uh, U.S. shipments that are still kind of stuck. Uh, they're they're processing and they are going out, but it's a bit slower than we had hoped. Uh, so a few still remain, uh, but we certainly hope they should be going out in the coming couple of days. Those are, I mean, the idea was that, of course, we would finish all backer shipments before the official release date. And that was the plan. But but uh, for a very, uh, various reasons, the warehouse was not able to complete the project in that time slot. So they are still struggling to get those last final orders out the door. But hopefully it, it's only a matter of days for, for the few people who are still waiting. Uh, I can understand that's frustrating. I mean, the, the vast majority of backers have already received the game. So of course it's uh, frustrating to, to, to be one of those who are still waiting. I can certainly understand that. And it's not a, something we want to happen and we'll do what we can to avoid it in the future. But uh, yeah, at least in the right now, uh, everything that we can is being done to get those final orders out the door. And one thing that we, I, I... You know, just just on, as a personal level, I know that I've noticed a, a delay in shipping uh, recently over the last couple of months, just because or the last couple of weeks, just because the holidays are starting to, to ramp up. People are doing a lot more holiday shopping, so things are not, aren't getting to, to places a, a lot, you know, faster faster as they, as they used to, um, and that's probably just going to kind of increase over these next few weeks as as we approach the holidays and get closer to to everything. Um, and then a lot of places are having staffing staffing issues. So hopefully, you know, everybody kind of takes the we kind of have to be a little more uh, conscious of of the things that are that are happening worldwide, just in general. And hopefully, hopefully, people are, are taking that into consideration. And and yeah, I, I'm 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 excited that folks are going to finally get this to the product, get to their get this to their table though, because it's a great product and it's full of content. Yeah, I, I think uh, we got some reviews out and so on, and I think it's it's uh, you know overall the reception has been been really good. So it's and I think this is the kind of game that really benefits from actually having it in physical yeah, format, definitely. even though the PDF is fine. This is the physical game adds another dimension. This is not just a book. This is really a game with with a lot of components, maps, dice, all kinds of handouts, stuff that that really brings the whole game together. So I think that's. And that I think has has come to be, you know, borne out by the reception of, of of the game release. That that it's really, yeah. And that's great to see that that you know what we aim to do uh, seems to have been working at least for most people. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been really, you know, the the community that uh, the existing Twilight Two Thousand community has really kind of 
uh, you know, taken to this new edition, which is, which is really nice. Uh, the majority of them have. So that, that's it's been really great to see. Uh, I know that since the release of, of Twilight 2000, the, there's been a whole lot more activity in, in the various groups that I'm involved in, you know, online, even on our, on our uh, Free League for, forum, uh, on the website, and uh, on various Facebook groups and, and Reddits and everything. So, you know, people are definitely talking about this product, which is really, really great. And, and you know, 99.9% .9 of it's very, very positive. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, one thing that we'll talk about that's kind of related to Twilight 2000 is that we'll have copies of Twilight 2000 available at PAX Unplugged. Uh, right. You know, it's towards the end of the, the year and you were thinking, man, this year just seemed to just start, but we're, we're coming towards the end of the year and we still have two more two more events for Free League Publishing that uh, I, I'm aware of. We've got Dragon Meat coming up the first weekend of December, if I'm not mistaken. Is it the first weekend yeah. of December? That's right, isn't it? Yeah, I believe, I believe so. so. Um, and I, I know Dave and Matt from the uh, from the Effect Podcast are going to be there uh, representing. This is in London. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if anybody is in the UK or in that that area, uh, you know, feel free to uh, stop by the Free League uh, booth there at uh, Dragon Meet and say hi to Dave and Matt for us. And uh, they do great work. I think uh, I think the Mork Borg guys are gonna Mork Borg guys are gonna that's be right. there as well. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Johan and 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 uh, Pelle from the, the Mork Borg team are will be there and have their own uh, their own booth, I believe. So, so nice. we definitely ch chat to those guys and and of course swing by that free league both booth also to speak to Matt and Dave who will be managing that. And I think Dragon Meet is the Saturday, December fourth. It's a one day thing. Nice. Excellent. And then the following weekend, uh, I'll be at PAX Unplugged with John Marin, who does a lot of the uh, the editing for uh, various books that we've done, we've put out. And yeah, uh, there's also uh, there's a few pe folks that will be on hand that uh, I'm, we might be able to pull in if it's super, super busy. But it'll be interesting to see how uh, it'd be nice to be back to PAX Unplugged. Philly's a great, uh, great city and excited to be, be back. So if you're going to PAX Unplugged, make sure to stop by as well. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the other big announcement that that we had this uh, this month, and that is that we have a new Vason uh, Kickstarter coming. Uh, yeah, December seventh, right. uh, Mythic Britain and Ireland, and yeah, uh, yeah and, and it's actually for two books. Uh, two also, books. you see the one in, in the back there. You can't actually make out the full title, but it's called Seasons of Mystery, and that's. Uh, that's a book of four mysteries, a bit similar, similar to the Wicked Secret book that has like four standalone uh, mysteries that, that you can play. And they can be set in the Mythic North in the original setting or, uh, and with uh, some minor tweaks, you can also place them in, in Mythic Britain if you prefer. So this Kickstarter is actually for both of those two books. Excellent, excellent. I know there was a question already uh... There's folks that are very, very excited for this Kickstarter, by the way. Uh, they were talking about it even before uh, before we went live. Um, one person asked, and I'm trying to think if the, there we go, the accidental DM asked, is the Seasons of Mystery book going to be a campaign or a series of solo missions? So if it's it's uh, more, there's more of a standalone um, uh, mysteries uh, that you can connect them to a campaign if you want to, you can certainly play them with the same characters. Uh, they're not like cinematics and Alien or, or something like that, which are hard, not meant to be played by the same characters. These ones certainly can be. But story-wise, they are uh, fairly independent from each other. I think the, what we are doing with this book is that it, you can gain, learn that, I guess, from the title that we're focusing uh, these four mysteries on four different seasons, which will give them a bit of a you know special feel, each one of them. So. The one for the winter, spring, summer, and fall. And I'm actually writing one of those myself, the, the summer uh, mystery I'm working on right now, actually. So we're just uh, wrapping that thing up. Uh, that's what I was doing right before we went on now. So I'll com continue hacking away at the keyboard when uh, we uh, close this session here. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that that's, uh, that's what you do a lot of, my friend, is yeah. hacking at that computer because... Uh, yeah, you you've uh, you work on uh, quite a few of these lines. Uh, and I do, yeah. You know, so, 
Uh, so yeah, so if folks are interested in uh, staying up to date on the new VASIN, uh, the Kickstarter, the link is in the description of the video. Please hit that, you know, that, that link, uh, and then you'll get notified. And, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you'll be able to, to pick up the core rule book as well with the Kickstarter if folks have, are waiting on picking up the core rule book. Yeah, that's right. There will be, uh, different kinds of bundles and starter bundles and things like that. So you can get, uh, the full game along with the new books, uh, as well, if you want. And I think we should also mention that the full, the, the main, uh, Mythic Britain and Ireland book is written by Graeme Davis, who's a oh, bit yes. of an icon of role play design. Uh, obviously, one of the uh, original uh, working with Games Workshop and the first edition of Warhammer Fantasy role play, and also actually on the current fourth edition, he was involved in also. So, and he's a bit of an expert on on uh, British folklore and stuff like that. So, it's really a perfect book for him to be writing. So we're really happy to have him on board for that. And of course, there's going to be new art by Johan Egerkrantz, who, who did the art for the original Basin game also. So it's, uh, yeah, it's shaping up to be a really nice package. And an amazing map by uh, Francesca Barreal, I think her name is, an Italian map artist who is just amazing. So uh, yeah, there's a lot to look forward to uh, for this Kickstarter. And also, the idea is obviously we're running it in December. But we're ending it on December 22nd, and our plan is to send out the full PDF, at least of the main book, possibly even the mysteries book, uh, on December 23rd. So basically, this is actually be a bit of a, be a bit of a holiday gift uh, for wow. the actor. So we'll get it right away uh, uh, if this can be, if we can manage it practically. We that's what we're aiming to do. And worst case, a couple of days later. But yeah, we uh, want to get it out. It's a bit of a seasonal thing, you know, it's a season of mystery, it's a season of, yes, yeah, so we figured why not make it a, a bit of a, you know, a holiday gift, uh, this PDF thing at least. And then the, obviously the physical books will come along a couple of months later. Very nice. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, I love that. I love that. Uh, <laughs> so someone asks, um, Band of, I think Band of Badgers asks, what time period is the Britain Island set during? It's the same time period as the original setting, the Mythic North, and it's basically the 19th century, but we're not uh, specifying exactly when, and that's intentional because it's not really uh, a game about a specific specific time period. It's more of, so we are giving ourselves some more creative freedom by, by not uh, nailing down the exact year or anything like that. But basically, I'd say mid 19th century, so 1850s, 1860s, around there, but it's not defined uh, exactly. Okay, excellent. There's a lot of questions in this. Uh, we let's. Uh, Kevin, Kevin wants to know uh, any more lore on the society coming with the new Basin books. Some, yeah. Basically, what you'll get in the Mythic Britain book uh, is uh, lore on the. British society. There's like a sister society uh, in Britain, so, and which has uh, connections to the one in, in the Mythic North, but they also have their own separate history. So you'll definitely learn more about larger society and, and societies uh, out there uh, throughout through this book. Nice. Uh, Jezre Jezreel asks, uh, will there be a new art uh, that uh, from Johan specifically for the books? Yeah, that uh, definitely there will be uh, the cover, uh, of course, at the very, but also a number of uh, pieces inside the book. We're including a bunch of new res and creatures, and those will all be illustrated by by Johan Egerkrantz. So we'll get new, oh, nice. new, uh, uh, unique art uh, for for the book. I think even if you go to the sign up page, we have a sign up page, like a pre launch Kickstarter page. You'll see a little art piece there and that's the cover art or part of it uh, by by Johan Egerkrantz which is also uh, a new art for this project for this book. Nice. nice. Uh, let's see here Bill says I hope Graham will talk about Mythic Britain book about the Mythic Britain book at some point maybe a guest on the show during the Kickstarter maybe perhaps we'll see maybe uh, maybe a good idea. We'll, we'll find out we'll find out. Uh, I'm going to tell folks if you if that's something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button. You'll you'll yeah. find out as soon as we make the announcement. We mm -hmm. schedule it on the show. How about that? Yeah, that's a great idea. That is a great idea. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about the uh, the other thing that I know uh, folks are eager to uh, to get, which is the Tales from the Loop, the board game update. That, right. Uh, 
Yep. Yep. I think last we heard that was that was uh, still in shipment in in on its way. Uh, yeah, and that um, the update there, I think this has been communicated in various updates. But basically, right now I'm checking as we speak. That's uh, what I do sometimes. Uh, I think uh, all of these items, all of the, I mean, the games and and those those expansion sets, they are all arrived at the various warehouses already so they're all they're all there so no more they're not stuck in some boat someplace uh that uh means they will start to ship them out soon uh but i mean for the and probably the i believe the uk warehouse will be a bit earlier this time because the, okay. the us one uh they are still working on getting the last twilight 2000 orders out so basically soon the minute they're done with that they'll get uh move forward on test on the loop so i mean i'm hoping we're talking about a uh a week or two or something like that before they can start ship out tales uh, from the loop the board game so i mean uh, if nothing unexpected happens i do feel that most if not all backers should have that game also before the holidays uh, nice. so that's that's moving forward, uh, albeit slower than we had hoped. But that's been the case for everything. This, you know, where it comes to uh, shipping and and that stuff throughout this fall, it's been you know it's been slow going, but uh, it's moving. The one thing we will not do for Tales from the Loop board game is that we will not release it in retail this year. It will be early next year. We had planned okay. to do that, but we want to make sure that the backer shipments go out first, and there is just not enough time to actually have a retail release also before the holidays. There's just not enough time. So we'll have plan that one for January or, or February or something like that. Okay, excellent, excellent. Yeah. I know a lot of folks are really uh, excited to to finally get that uh, on their tables. So it's, yeah, uh, me too, it's actually. I only played like the prototype and that's not the same thing. So I want to have the finished, we have like a single copy or something, but it's not, I don't have, I want to play this with my, you know, with the kids and, and family. I think it's going to be a fun game like that to, Absolutely. to crack out and, and, and play. It doesn't have to be with hardcore role players. Uh, I think uh, not other people you can, you can try this game on uh, with as well. So nice, nice. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about the One Ring and give updates on that. I, I know uh, last we heard that was also uh shipping out uh, in on a boat uh, do yeah we have... uh that's uh arriving uh it's uh some parts some shipments are still on boats others have already arrived it's a bit of a mixed bag situation was, uh, was... but it should be arriving to the warehouses within the next one or two weeks okay and then it will start ship out the backers so you know since we're still pushing out twilight and tales from the board game and and so on that means that the one ring will also hopefully get out be, to backers before the holidays but it's going to be a, a tight uh, match to get that done and get it out uh, from the warehouses but it'll start in a couple of weeks so uh you know around the holidays the, those books should start arriving to backers also uh we will in the same case as tales from the loop the board game the general retail uh, physical release will be early next year not not now we will we just have to wait until all backers have shipments or have arrived or at least you know on the way so we'll need to push that one uh, over to next year uh, also but uh we're considering to actually launch uh, a pre-order and uh, a pdf uh, sale uh, of of this uh, of the one ring uh, in maybe just a week or so Okay. So uh, next week, the 30th, that's just six days from now, we will start a pre-order in our web shop. That means you can, if you miss the Kickstarter and the late pitch uh, option, you have, you can now, will be able to pre-order the book and that will get you the PDF immediately. Uh, and you will also be able to get the PDF from drive to RPG uh, starting Tuesday, the 30th. Oh, uh, we wanted to get... Uh, players who missed the Kickstarter a chance to get their whole their hands on on the PDF by pre-ordering from our web shop or getting the PDF uh, separately from drive through so that other gamers who missed the Kickstarter don't have to wait until February or something to to even have a chance to check the game out so that's uh, we're doing a bit of a pre-release pre-order starting next week 
Excellent. So uh, the folks that, that pre-order it, will they'll get copies sent to them after the Kickstarter backers or? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So if you pre-order in the web shop, you will be in the second wave after Kickstarter orders go out. But uh, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. so you'll the physical book will take a bit of time, uh, but at least you'll get the PDF immediately. And that means no more. If you just want to have a look at the game and start playing using the PDF, maybe read up on it, plan a campaign, and then you'll uh, get the PDF right away. And then you get the physical books, I would say January or, or possibly February, but hopefully January. And uh, so at least that's a chance to get started with the game while you wait for the printed physical books to arrive. Excellent. Excellent. Now, the one other uh... Well, actually, no, we've got two other Kickstarter updates that uh, the, that uh, we can go over. Uh, the other one is Ruins of Simbrum. Uh, this is the 5e edition of Simbrum uh, for players that uh, love to play 5e. Uh, yes. I, do you have any uh, idea what, what the status is for, uh, um, for, for that? Kickstarter? I think it just went to print uh, okay. pretty much on schedule. Uh, I think it's now in the hands of the printer lords. Uh, we've kind of <laughs> left <laughs> left our... Uh, left our hands, so now it's in that kind of a spot where where it's in the hands of the printer, and I'm sure it's, they're going to do a good job. And then it goes out to to warehouses and then to backers. But that's a bit of a later project, so it's uh, I think it's planned for the spring, sometime. And I believe we are pretty much on track, barring shipping difficulties and things. Uh, we should be fairly well on on track uh, for that one. Uh, yeah, so it's it's on its way and it's it's looking good. Excellent. Uh, just uh, to kind of go off the, the the topic just for a little bit. Um, have you noticed any? Is it has it has shipping become easier in the last you know month, or have you noticed any difference between? Because I know you know back two three months ago it was it was you know even during the summer it was crazy. Have, have you seen any any you know? improvement on, on on that situation in general right i wish i could say curious. yes but not really it's all right still just, i was just kind of curious yeah yeah hmm. all right cool uh and then finally the other uh, kickstarter that we can update we can update you on all on is uh the Fur forbidden lands the blood march and the book of beasts uh kickstarter i know the pledge manager uh, hit the the other day. You sent out a, an update to let everyone know that that, that was now out. Um, yeah, and I think and and folks can can now late pledge uh, for for that product as well, for those products as well in the description below. Uh, so definitely, uh, if you missed out on the Kickstarter, feel free to uh, click on that link. Do you have any kind of update for? Uh, yeah, uh, there uh, writing wise, we're basically done uh there are some editing left to do and and some translations this, this is a dual language thing oh, okay uh but we're well ahead and, and art wise is where most things are happening right now and henrik rosenborg who was uh doing the illustrations for these two books the book of beasts and the blood march he's uh you know just pumping out new stuff every day and and and, and showing us and it's looking really great so he'll be working, uh, you know, uh, away on that for at least a month or two more, I believe. And then we should move into layout and print uh, in, you know, early next, early next year. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much on track to to ship this out to backers towards the summer, which is uh, was the original plan. And that's so far holds. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I know folks were really uh, uh, anxious to get that uh, play, pledge manager all filled out, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Forbidden Lands has really seen a, a resurgence of uh, popularity, especially here in the the U.S. events that we've seen. Uh, so uh, it's neat to to uh, see folks uh, playing this and and loving it as much. And and, and yeah, I, I've had folks that have messaged me and and the uh, Facebook groups and the, 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 the forum, again, this is another one that just seems to have taken off kind of out of the blue and, and uh, really kind of uh, captured a lot of fo folks, which is, which is great to see. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking the same. It's, it's always interesting to see what kind of, uh, how, how games are, are received and, and it feels like Forbidden Lands is uh, it just keeps on going. Yeah. Even though we have been, I wouldn't say we have been slow pushing out expansions, but not really super fast either, maybe. So, I mean, it's uh, despite 
that it, I feel that the, the game is is uh, seems to be being uh, finding new players all, all the time, which is always you know great to see. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. Uh, Risa Ghoul asks, will Nicholas Brandt be doing any art for the Blood March? Uh, yeah, uh, he's absolutely involved. He's doing, uh, uh, all, for example, all of these uh, maps. I wouldn't even call them maps. They're illustrations, really. But they are of the adventure site maps that are kind of uh, side view art pieces, uh, full spread stuff uh, of all of the main locations, the, the adventure sites. He's doing those, which are really key uh, art pieces. He's also doing some graphics some uh, other maps and, and things like that. So he's uh, very much involved uh, in, in this project as well. Excellent, excellent. I think that's everything for updates that I have. Is there anything else that uh, that I missed, Thomas? You're, you, I, I, I'm trying to think. I think that's, um, I think that's everything. I guess that so. I guess maybe <laughs> mentioned we uh, released the art book uh, at the Mountains of Madness, Volume Two, oh, that's just, right. uh, yesterday. That's right. Really, we had a short uh, pre-order, and now it's officially released. It may not be available in retail everywhere just yet because of shipping stuff, uh, but you can get it through our web shop, uh, and we have a, a bundle with Volume One and Two if you want to get them both. And and it's really. It's uh, an amazing piece of work by 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 uh, Francois Baranger, who illustrated this Lovecraft classic. Uh, so uh, if you're into Lovecraft, this is really worth worth checking out. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the the uh, the the first two books are just gorgeous. So yeah, I'm uh, oh, yeah. There's the story. There we go. We'll put the store up there so then folks can yeah. can check it out. Uh, yeah, so, some great books. They're they're great coffee table books. If if you love if you're a Lovecraft fan, this these are I think these are must haves just because they're just so be beautifully illustrated and the books are just I think they're just really well done. And you know, whenever you have them out, whenever I have them out, I know folks just pick them up and, and want to look through them. So cool. All right. Yeah, let's take some. Let's, we've got we're 27, 27 minutes in. You want to take some questions and, and kind of get to some community chat? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. Let's uh, we scroll all the way back up. This chat is very lively. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. This is awesome. Uh, Rick says, uh, more Vason, take my money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, let's go here. Uh, Subcommandant73 asks, will we have the undead as an expansion for Vason or a standalone game? Yeah, it's a good question. The Undead is a book, an art book uh, by Johan Egekrans that he did after he did uh, Vazen, the art book, which is uh, what we based the uh, RPG on. Uh, so yeah, it, it would, in a, in a way, make sense to perhaps turn the Undead into a, a, a game as well. But I think we're com we're approaching this one a little bit differently. We want to build on Vazen and make that uh, uh, you know, not a series of standalone games, but rather expand this game and this game world with more uh, primarily geographical expansions, like now the Mythic Britain in Ireland, and then perhaps we'll move into other areas of the world and explore the mythical creatures and vision of those areas of the world. Uh, and that's how we want to approach that. And we'll use, I mean, we'll be inspired by uh, and, and use uh, Johan's art and work, he also writes the stuff, so it's not just an artist, uh, from the undead. Uh, and we'll probably use that stuff to inspire these uh, source books, these uh, geographical source books coming up. But the, those books will be more of our own creations. They will not just be based on an art book one to one. They will more of be of our own uh, design and then will be inspired by Johan's work. And I believe, for example, the Undead book has, I think, two very, uh, very British uh, creatures in there. I think they have like the Banshee and, and one more are in that art book. So, of course, that will be part of the Mythic Britain book. So it'll be there, but not like a one to one uh, conversion into an RPG. Uh, Mohammed S. Away from spoiler, will there be any stories connected between the, the mysteries of the mythic Nordic and the myth in Britain slash Ireland? 
Uh, right. Uh, there will be a way, uh, some some guidelines for playing. If you have uh, characters already in the Mythic North, how to play them in the myth in Mythic Britain? How you could send them over? Or you could have some kind of story where you would, for some reason, um, travel over to to Britain and and explore those creatures. There is that like support if you want to keep playing with the same characters. I'm not sure if there are any crossovers within the mysteries themselves. I think those are fairly geographically focused on, on Britain and Ireland. Uh, so that's the, I think, uh, if I'm not misinformed, but I think that's the case. Tavu Drums asks, uh, any Coriolis news? Yeah, uh, that's uh, obviously the big thing for Coriolis is the final third part of Mercy of the Icons. Uh, and we are working uh, on that right now. I believe the writer is just now wrapping up the full complete text. I think I saw him just send it the other day. So I think we have a full and complete draft of it. And then, of course, there's a lot of work in editing, translation. That's also a dual language thing. So that's going to take some time. And the art that's uh, happening, uh, that's being worked on right now, but there is some way to go. So I, there will be news on that front. I believe not before uh, the turn of the year, but early next year, we'll definitely be able to uh, announce things and show things from uh, from that uh, Mercy of the Icons part three. Um, beyond that, we have some other plans for Corollas as well, but that's, that's uh, a bit further ahead. Nice, nice. Uh, Grillots uh, asks, will the next Vason book be the same high quality standards, i.e. The, the thick paper and textured cover? Uh, <laughs> don't mention the content because I know it'll be great. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's one um, thing that I love about the book. Like as soon as you pick it up, it feels like yeah, it kind of feels old almost. You know, I, yeah. I love how you guys made that. Yeah, we really wanted to to get that feeling right, and and you know the choice of paper and and stuff like that matters. It, it, I think that's a, uh, always something that we feel is important for for our books. It's it's not just the rules, not just the setting, not just you know the art and the graphic design, but also the physical feel of the of the of the books and games. So. And yeah, we definitely plan to continue. We'll be printing these things uh, with using exactly the same types of materials as the the first two resin books that we did. Excellent, excellent. Now, Billy here has a question that I, I can't. I'm going to put it up on screen, and you can. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I can't. I can't. If, yeah. if you want to answer that and 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 say what it is, you can. But uh, I'll I'll let you answer that if you if you'd like. Right. Uh, the answer is no, but they will be uh, appearing elsewhere. All right. All right. Let's go here. Dan S. At the Mountains of Madness looks really great and fits nicely on my shelf. That nice. Is, it's great. Uh, Kevin asks, once new products are getting closer for Twilight 2000 pre-order or Kickstarter? Uh, oh, oh, our, mm. uh, I'm, I'm you not, mean, I, uh, well, I assume this refers to if there are other new products uh, coming, coming, um, may, may, yeah. maybe they're asking if they, they'd be available for your pre order or Kickstarter, Kickstarter or is, is, for is new that... product, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, we're working on let's see, yeah, one, two, we'll have planned four uh, modules for Twilight 2000 at the moment. Two of them, three of them are actively being worked on right now. The, uh, and uh, so one, the first one is called our Urban Operations. It will be focused on cities and playing in cities. That one is fully written and is now being illustrated. So that's going to be the first one out the door. Then we have uh, Hostile Waters. That's the working title, at least. And that will be based on waterways and things like that. Uh, that one is being written right now uh, and will then be illustrated and so on. And then we have the Black Madonna, which was a Kickstarter stretch goal, which is a remake of the classic module by the same name. And it's being written by the same author, Frank Frey. Uh, and he's doing the new one as well. Uh, we have some delays on that one, uh, but it's getting there. Uh, and then we have finally the fourth one is called Operation Reset. 
and that kind of uh, hooks into all of the others and, and the, the story in the core game to build more of a larger story arc using all of these because the rest of the material is very much sandbox stuff uh, but Operation Reset will give a bigger meta plot or whatever you want to call it uh, for, for the game. So these are coming out one by one. We will probably not kickstart them, at least I don't think so because they're they're not small, but they are quite focused, and we want to get them out fairly quickly. So we will probably do pre-orders and then just get them out there. And we want to probably make them, at least most of them, uh, to small boxed sets, because we just like the main game, uh, each expansion will have like more maps and counters and things. Uh, so we and more encounter cards and, and stuff like that. So. We feel that small, like thinner box sets, probably uh, uh, looking a bit like the cinematic scenarios for, for Alien, kind of a thin, skinny box, but uh, something like that, that's what we want to do for the Twilight 2000 modules uh, coming up. So the first one should be, uh, yeah, you would probably see a pre-order for it early next year. Excellent, excellent. Uh Kill us. Uh, any news on Blade Runner? That's... Uh, yeah, uh, that's progressing well. Uh, that's what I, apart from now, I'm doing some basin writing, but that's not really my main my main work uh, where, uh, where it comes to design and writing. I do some other stuff too, but I mean, basin is more of a side, small sideshow. I'm not the lead on that, but Blade Runner is what I spend most of my time on. It's uh, I do the overall game design, rules design, and then uh, alongside Joe uh, Lafavi, who who does the setting writing, and it's yeah, it's progressing really well. Art-wise, we're doing a lot of work. We did a lot of playtesting. We had a big playtesting session of the first scenario, just a couple of we we wrapped it up like two weeks ago, I think. That uh, it was an internal playtest of the first scenario that that we wrote, and it's. Uh, it's looking good. I mean, uh, at least internally, we're really happy with with where it's going. So let's uh, we're just hoping that everyone else will feel the same way. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's uh, what we've said so far is a, a, a release next year, and that's still what we're looking at and try and we'll aiming for. Uh, exactly when next year is a bit early to say, but we'll likely have some form of pre-purchase option, whatever that would look like. Uh, that's not decided yet, but in, in the spring. Uh, so a little bit later in the spring is when uh, we'll probably see uh, more like a formal announcement or, or a pre-order or something along those lines. Uh, Grisha Ghoul asks, uh, maybe a vase in North America someday? Yeah, that's definitely one of the... We have been discussing that, uh, where to go after Britain and Ireland. There are some different options, and uh, a Mythic America book is, is certainly one of those options. Uh, so we haven't decided yet which is the next one in line, but we'll see. Uh, let's. Matt has a comment here. Let's uh, let's discuss this. Free League lack of response to communicate about the Twilight 2000 handling makes me question doing business with them in the future. Yeah. Matt, let's. Uh, <laughs> is is there anything that uh, if. I know that, I mean, the, now during the, the fulfillment of Twilight 2000, I assume that's what this refers to. That, yeah. I mean, our support staff really tried to answer things and handle things as quickly as they can. But I know in the last couple of weeks, they've been a bit overwhelmed. Uh, and of course, there's always the risk of, of an email getting stuck in spam or not, you know, or just being missed. That happens. It's not ideal, but it happens. And uh, But I mean, uh, they do try to reply to everything within... A day but sometimes if they have you know being a bit overwhelmed they can take a, a couple of days before they have a chance to to reply uh but uh so we do try to answer everything and manage all of these situations as best we can so but it's always unfortunate when you know when when a backer feels we're not being responsive enough we really do try as best we can but we can always improve and do better so that's a it's a constant effort on our part so man, yeah, we apologize that uh, you feel like uh, we're, you know, I, uh, I think that the Thomas is is in the team to do a great job, and I, I, I'm. It's, it's, we try. I mean, yeah. I won't say we always do. I mean, sometimes we, uh, you know, we could do better. That's certainly the case, and uh, 
we do uh, strive to improve and uh, if I'm happy to look into this case uh, as soon as possible but uh, yeah our support staff do manage these things these things even though it can take a bit of time Mike asks uh, if you're focusing on regional books for vase does it mean that that the campaign which the dance of dreams implies is part uh, that it's part of is currently on hold well, that's a good question. It's uh, I wouldn't say on hold necessarily. It's it's something. It's already we have a, a draft of it. We might need to make some changes to that draft, but it's there. Uh, this there is a campaign thought out for it. Uh, it does need a bit of work. So so yeah, I guess we are doing the Mythic Britain stuff right now. So the this campaign book is a bit further off. But it, I wouldn't say necessarily that it's on hold or, or not being done. It's just that uh, it's not first in line. Excellent. Uh, it looks like there was a couple questions about uh, the Vaisin, uh, Vaisin uh, campaign book. Uh, with, the ru with the core Ruins of Simbrum books now going to print, do you have an estimation as to when the other books, the Adventure Compendium, the Call of the Dark, will be finished? Uh, uh, yeah, I believe uh, I should actually actually ask Matthias about this one because Simbarum stuff is really his. He's the uh, master of all things Simbarum, but I do believe those should be uh, well underway. I would have to. I would need to look into that and get back to you to check the status of those things particularly because I don't know off the top of my head exactly where they stand. Okay. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Gr Greylots asks, "Will you will you request from the French editor, uh, Arcane Asylum, that they respect the quality standards of the original books and not print them on glossy paper?" So, uh, the, I think that's in referring to the uh, the Vaison. Uh, I assume that was about Vaison then. Maybe? Yes, I'm. I'm yeah. because yeah, he's asked a few questions about. Uh, they've asked a few questions about. Basins. Well, uh, we do. I mean, we do have a conversation with licensing partners about things like this. I wouldn't okay. say it's a hard requirement because there are always they may have for any number of reasons different. Uh, yeah, they want to do things differently sometimes. But it's uh, so I cannot say for sure that it's going to be exactly the same paper. But we do uh, require licensing partners to produce high quality stuff, even when it comes to printing and so on. So. Uh, so yeah, it's not a definite answer. I would have to look into that more closely, exactly what kind of paper they're planning to use. But but in general, I think it should be fairly similar. Lars has a question. This is anything planned for the line for Alien? Yeah, absolutely. Alien is uh, certainly, a, you know, it's a bit of a flagship key thing for us. So absolutely. We are working uh, on the Heart of Darkness, which is the next cinematic uh, scenario uh, for Alien. And that's coming out soon it's going to print in the next couple of weeks so in the spring you'll see and hear more about that one uh we are really polishing up the content now to really make it as playable as possible and as cool as possible so we're really doing some retakes i guess would be the movie equivalent of that we're doing some changes uh fixing some things up and and, and making sure it's it's as really as great as it possibly can be uh so it's uh, we're in the final stretch uh going into layout and then to print so in the first half of next year you should see heart of darkness and then we have uh, uh the next campaign book is is next up after that which is uh focusing on on colonists uh going far into space and colonizing new worlds uh, that's that's going to be the focus for the second campaign book and similar in size to the colonial marines book maybe not quite quite as thick because that one went a little bit overboard excellent the uh now i'm a little behind on the chat so after we t talk about something i get to the the, the reaction of the chat so greaser ghouls is sick wendigo uh sasquatch and champions talking mm -hmm. they're talking about the uh the uh the north america uh, yeah basically. yeah uh, Absolutely. Vermont, that, Vermont. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. That would be a cool thing. I mean, we have been uh, talking about exactly that. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. You should know that I know a lot about Champ because I'm, right? I'm I'm a Vermonter. So, right. I, 
I, I might have seen him a time or two. Not, I guess so. Can't, that's like, can't, uh, can't confirm or deny that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Country Mass says, uh, if you do a, a mythic in North America, please make sure to engage with indig indigenous peoples to ensure the material is handled as respectfully as I know you would want it to be. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have been discussing this exact point. Uh, if we do this module, which you haven't decided yet, uh, we'll definitely, you know, make sure that we we handle uh, all these subjects uh, in the right way and, and bring on the right people who, who know this uh, stuff and, and uh, make sure it's done right. That's uh, absolutely uh, a goal for us. Uh, Peter just says, "I back the. I just backed the Book of Peace and Blood March for Forbidden Lands. Thank you, Peter. Nice. I appreciate Thank that. You. I appreciate that very much. Uh, let's see here. Let me looser says nothing but praise from my side. Excellent quality of products that I've purchased. Twilight 2000 standout RPG. Looking forward to Basin. That's very nice. Thank, thank you. you. That's that's very very nice. Oh, Dorigio says a friend of mine just published a book." Mythical Creatures of Maine, if you're looking for base nice. in North America content. All right, cool. Maine has uh, Maine has a lot of... Uh, it seems like it, yeah. Everything up there, so... Uh, let's see here. Bobby Alice says, uh, Bobby Alice says, will the One Ring late pledges be sent out with the Kickstarter orders, or will that be shipped with the pre-orders you dis discussed earlier? Well, the general idea is that we all want them to be shipped out as quickly as possible. I mean, we don't want to wait necessarily for anyone to wait, but uh, the order in which we will try to make it happen is is Kickstarter backers first, then late pledge backers, then pre-orders, and of course, then you have the actual release. But that doesn't mean that if you pre-order, you would get it like months after the Kickstarter backer. It might be. A week after something like that it shouldn't be a, a drawn up process in any way so eric asks do you have any more information about dragons and demons mm, yeah that is uh the swedish game we're making we have a few titles that are not uh, in for the international market for a number of reasons this is one of them uh this game that he's referring to is like the the big you know, one uh, fantasy RPG uh, in Sweden in, in, from back in the 80s. It was the one that everybody played. And we are doing a new version, a new edition of that game uh, due to come out next year. We don't have that much more to say yet, but it's also on track for a release next year. Uh, Grillots asks, uh, do we have any... Uh, do, are we going to develop any more for the campaign mode for Alien? He, they think that uh, the cinematic mode seems to steal the show for that product line. Right. In their, in their opinion. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned there, we have the book. It's the, I think it's going to be called Building Better Worlds, and that's for the colonists. Uh, and, and they're really giving... Because we have those three main themes, right? You have the space truckers, you have the marines, colonial marines, and then the, the colonists. Uh, and uh, basically, we plan to give each of these uh, these core concepts uh, a big campaign book each. So we did the, Col the Colonial Marines book first, uh, and then the next one's going to be for the colonists, and then most likely uh, like a space trucker book for campaign play uh, with those particular types of characters uh, after that. So yeah, we're definitely planning a lot more stuff on the campaign side. But you're right, I think cinematics are very, well, cinematic they work really well on i mean they're being streamed they're they're you know quite easy to they're shorter so they're easier to talk about and and compare experiences and so yeah i guess they get more attention than the campaign stuff but uh we do want to support both modes of play so we're definitely continuing to do that plus if you're, if you're playing an, an alien rpg you more than likely have watched a few of the movies, so you know that that's probably the the overall experience that's going to happen. So maybe, you know, I don't know. But campaign mode is great for Alien. I'm going to say that right now. Well, I, that uh, Colonial Marines Operations Manager Manual was it was amazing. Oh, let's see here. Come on, S. Uh, hello. Do you have? Some news about the sent to the backer of the PDF of final version of Simbrum, ru the runes of Sim Simbrum. Do we have uh, do we 
Uh, the final version. I know we did send out like an alpha PDF of the 5e version of Symbrum, the ruins of Symbrum. Actually, I would need to ask Matthias about the final PDF of that one. I'm not entirely okay. sure. Uh, I'll ask him. Uh, okay. I think that's that should be on the way. I'm actually not 100% sure on when that's happening, but since it just went to print, I would assume it's always a bit of a work just to get the PDF in order. It's uh, the PDF that goes to print and the one used for digital purposes are not the same file. They're done right. differently. Uh, they're, you know, so there is a bit of work there, but uh, if it's, it should definitely not be far, far off. Uh, for the one ring hunter asks uh, any timeline for the for strider mode or for or ruins of the north for the one ring yeah uh, strider mode uh, is progressing and the ruins uh, of the north or, or what it's going to be called i think there might be a name change there but in any case this book is also now it's we're finalizing the uh, the writing and the art are, are are due to finish now in the next couple of weeks before the holidays and then it's going to go into layout and you'll learn uh, more about it see more about it early next year uh, alongside the new actually we're also working on the new 5e edition of the one ring uh, so that's also coming uh, yeah sometime early early next year Dan uh, Dan mentions uh, Cyborg look Cyborg looks great. It might finally be the cyberpunk RPG I've been looking for. That's a good. Uh, we didn't yeah. really get a chance to mention that. That's also on Kickstarter from uh, Johan and uh, uh, Christian yeah. uh, doing really well. I did put a link for that if folks are interested in a uh, Cyborg, which is like the cyberpunk version of Morkborg. Uh, go check that yep. out. Uh, you want to talk That's a little really, bit about what? Really cool game that uh, that uh, very unique style and just just like Morkborg, and it's uh, really worth worth checking out on Kickstarter right now, like you said, doing well. I think it's up on Kickstarter for another week. Uh, so, uh, and uh, so yeah, not that much time left to, to look, uh, to get uh, on that Kickstarter if you haven't already done so. We had, uh, we had a great little Q and A with uh, Johan and Christian right. uh, yeah. uh, about a week ago, and and they're they're great guys, and it was yep. it was lots of fun chatting with them. So, cool. uh, congratulations to their success again, because yeah, they do great great, great work. Uh, okay. So, oh, Vortex. We just answered that question for Vortex eleven seventy one about uh, adventures in Middle Earth. That's great. Uh, Bobby has a question that might be, I don't know if we can answer it, but we'll, we'll I'll pose it out here. Are, are you working with Marvel or Disney or whoever to tie in the current alien comics and upcoming TV show into the RPG? Yeah, those things are always, uh, interesting. Uh, we are, we do talk to other licensees as we're all called. Uh, I mean, there is a number of different licenses for these big brands these big ips you have computer games comics novels or kinds of stuff and and uh we are in contact with them for 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 alien uh definitely to make sure that they do things and we do things that are kind of working together and ties in so we all to pick the same world of course uh disney uh themselves who who own the ip now uh of course are the custodians of, of the ip and make sure we're all you know in line telling this describing the same world so we can't just go in our different directions and, and contradict each other and that would just be bad for for everybody so yeah we are talking to others i think there are some examples of that uh like in the colonial marines book there are uh com there are some cross references between this alien fire teams computer game that came out a while back i think they uh, include some characters from our uh, rpg book and i think some concepts from the computer game are in our book so i know that drew who wrote the book uh was in in contact with them and and made this happen so yeah and that's how we do it and try to do it uh, in all of these cases, especially if we are placing our products in the same, roughly the same uh, era uh, or, or place on the timeline of, of, I mean, of course, Alien covers, I don't know, a number of hundred years. So it's, and uh, since this Fireteam game and our 
our RPG are basically placed in almost, not exactly the same year, but close. That means uh, the need to coordinate is, is, uh, is even greater. So that's what we try to do. Uh, Eric wants to know, will you be at the Tabletop Game Expo this spring in Stockholm? Uh, not sure. I believe possibly, probably yes. But it's. I don't think we have a definite decision on that yet. Okay. Scott says, uh, Scott asks, if I back the Forbidden Lands Blood March at the completest level, will I will it all come in one package, or will I get existing products now and the two new books later? Yeah, we have done uh, what they, what's called split shipping before. Like you would get the at least had the option of splitting your order and get the existing stuff now and then the new stuff later. But we have some bad experience with that because it just speaking of of, of Kickstarter fulfillment that's complex enough as it is and, and splitting it into different waves and, and things like this. It's just not really, uh, it's not a bit of great experience. We just feel it gets confusing for us and for backers. And it's better to just say we have one wave of shipping. So the, the straight answer is that, yeah, if you, if you get that package, that bundle, everything comes together. Obviously, if you want to get the existing stuff now beforehand, uh, there is the web shop uh, or wherever else you, you might find them, but the web shop has this stuff. And uh, well, also, uh, I mean, and if you want to get them at a good good price, I guess we could mention there's going to be, uh, yeah, just what is it today? It's, it's uh, Wednesday. So there's going to be a bit of a sale on Friday. It's the Black Friday sale. So there, you'll probably be able to pick up at least some of these things at a decreased price uh, on Friday. And uh, so that might be a good Good hint for well for everyone who wants to you know a chance to get some of these games at a lower cost. There's going to be that option uh, on Friday. I think it's going to run from Friday over the weekend and until Monday, and then it's over. So it's a fairly short but sharp uh, sale. Nice, nice. Uh, let's see here. Hunter asks any tabletop RPG games outside of the free league sphere because I'm sure Thomas, you have so much free time to just. Get to get to play all sorts of games because that's that's one thing that that we found in this when you work in the industry and you have a game store you get, do with like seems like your your free time just shrinks 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 away. Yeah. But uh, have you been able to play anything outside of free league recently that you've been inspired by? Yeah, I mean we do try to play. I mean we have like I I usually we have like a Tuesday evening game that we oh, run nice. and that's with people. Some of them are from inside the free league, and and well, actually, one or two guys, it, it, two of them are are not are outsiders, and we play different games. Sometimes we play test our own stuff. So the last thing we played with this group was uh, the Blade Runner, our own Blade Runner game. So that was obviously internal. But before that, we played all kinds of games uh, in this group. Some some modern games, like big games, small indie games. All kinds of stuff. I think they actually the most recent one before Blade Runner, we actually played uh, a scenario of the old James Bond RPG from like oh, did you the really? mid '80s. That was actually kind of fun. It's a That's bit awesome. clunky and weird, uh, but fun. So that was uh, we had a good time. We just uh, got all into the whole James Bond feel. It's about the time the new film came out, and we all just felt like we wanted to dive in a bit to that world. So we played that. That old game. Sometimes it's interesting to play old games, even though there there might be things there that don't really work anymore. There's also good stuff that you know might have been lost along the on the way. So it's always interesting sure. sometimes to play some older games as well. Absolutely, I get to play. And uh, I, I know this, that question was probably more more towards you, but I actually got to play uh, Death in Space. Oh yeah, uh, a, cool. a couple of weeks ago that that was a nice. lot of fun. That was yeah. although that's still kind of uh, what we we helped. We're, 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 that was under the uh, free league workshop. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of like a more core situation. We're not designing the game; it's not our our creation, but we are helping uh, distributing it and and yeah. getting it out there. Yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. I, that was the one one game that uh, I, I truly enjoyed. Uh, Bobby says, uh, thank getting on the road. Just want to say thank you for taking time and taking our questions. It's truly appreciated. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you for joining thank us. We you. appreciate it. Uh, Scott says, th awesome. Thanks for the reply. I love the streams. Thank you. We, we, we really greatly appreciate everybody that uh, joins us live and, and watches these after the fact. Uh, so, so thank you as well. Uh, Lars asks, are, are there any further plans for mutant? 
Uh, yes, there are. We are working on one pretty big project uh, that we should unveil also in the next couple of months, uh, like so much other things. Uh, it's not a role playing game. It's something else. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. We are doing some things uh, not RPG, even though it's fairly close and it's definitely related. It's not an actual role playing game, but something different. So that's uh, I'm really looking forward to being able to share that and show that and play that. We did play some internal play testing, uh, early prototype stuff. Uh, but I guess I shouldn't say now exactly what it is because that's just going to spoil the surprise. Yeah, so we'll, we, we'll, that. We'll, we'll leave that for we'll leave no, that for a bit later. Yeah, yeah. You, you should know that when I did the Q and A with Johan and uh, Christian, someone did ask when is Ad Astra coming from? Mm. <laughs> it seems like every single stream that we do, so uh, mutant Ad Astra gets added to the yeah. uh, to the chat. That is also being worked on. Uh, yeah. We have a writer now who has who his deadline I think is early next year and and you know so that's that's also speaking of mutant that's also uh, that's also coming. Very cool. Well, I think I'm pretty well caught up. Everybody's uh, asking or talking about '80s RPGs, which is great. <laughs> um, is there anything you'd like to? I I one thing I forgot to totally mention is uh, to say. Uh, if you are a viewer in the, the United States, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Uh, thank you. Greatly uh, appreciate you and, and uh, appreciate everybody all over the world, of course. But uh, definitely yeah. thankful for, for everybody that joins us. And, and Thomas, I'm thankful for, for being part of uh, the small part of the, the free league team that you allow me to be. And, 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 yeah, and, thank, you. and uh, thank you for, for allowing us. And thank you to everyone Absolutely. for joining us. So, uh, Is there anything else you'd like to add before, before we sign off, my friend? I think I'm good. I'm going to go okay. cook some dinner for the kids. Go have some dinner. Have some uh, time with your family. Everyone, Absolutely. have a great uh, evening or day, wherever you're at in the world. We we'll, we'll greatly appreciate you. And hopefully your dice rolls will not have to be pushed. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye.